It seems that many of us would rather be experts on grievance than on grief. Welcome to NVC Life. I'm Rochelle Lamb, veteran NVC trainer and relationship coach, helping listeners navigate interpersonal conflict and ground more deeply into relational living. Greetings, fellow humans. One of my all-time favorite books is by psychologist and author David Rico. It's titled, The Five Things We Cannot Change and the Happiness We Find by Embracing Them. First published in 2005 by Shambhala Publications. The reason I appreciate this book is because so many of our problems in our day-to-day lives and our interpersonal relationships, at least in my opinion, boil down to a set of unexamined expectations that we have about life. For example, the reasons that people most often cite for going to couples counseling is that they don't communicate well, that their partner doesn't listen, doesn't reveal, doesn't connect, doesn't care, etc. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm being dismissive of these things. They matter. I think, however, that we need to understand our dilemmas in a proper context. Rico's book helps the reader to see the bigger picture by establishing the context in which our lives unfold. I'm reminded of something that author Eckhart Tolle says in one of his talks regarding the way most humans live their lives. Reality? I'm totally against it. The five things we cannot change is important because it identifies the things we cannot change, and how our continued efforts to change them only generate misery in our lives. Are you curious to know what those five things are? Here they are. The first one is, everything changes and ends. The second one is, things do not always go according to plan. The third one, life is not always fair The fourth one, pain is part of life. The fifth and final one is people are not loving and loyal all the time. Rico refers to these as givens. They are part of life. Try as we might, we can't separate them from life. Now, I'm going to look at each one of these through the lens of nonviolent communication, specifically through the lens of needs. Let's start with the first one. Everything changes and ends. When we find ourselves at odds with this reality, we might say things like, I feel so frustrated because I have a need for consistency, reliability, predictability, stability, security. I have a need to trust that certain things will always remain in place. Of course, these are needs, but it's important to keep in mind that just because it's a need, it doesn't also mean that we are entitled to consistently have our needs met. Sometimes we will, sometimes we won't. And when we don't, how then shall we respond? I would say that our responses to the changes and endings that life presents to us will hopefully help us to develop and mature over time so that we are able to establish an internalized sense of stability even as things come undone in our lives and even as we ourselves come undone. This brings us to the second given. Things do not always go according to plan. I would say that needs here are the same as for the one we just looked at. Consistency, reliability, predictability, stability, security. We sure like to feel in control of things. And by that, I don't necessarily mean a tyrannical control over events and other people even though I don't exclude that, I'm more pointing to the fact that despite our best intentions and well-considered actions, there are simply too many other forces to contend with on the great chessboard of life. To rage against things, not going according to our small plans is akin to a two-year-old throwing a tantrum when it's time for bed or when they're denied candy before dinner. We don't always get what we want. We are not the center of life. 
I'll add to this list of needs the need for consideration. It's easy to confuse being considered with getting what we want. But we need to remember that we are not the only consideration. Life requires that all things are considered, not only that which we are placing a high priority on in any given moment. Let's move to the third given. Life is not always fair. Ooh, that's a hard one, isn't it? We want things to be fair. Here the needs would be fairness, equity, justice, honesty, consideration. When speaking about things unfair, I think we can easily identify the kind of unfairness that, while challenging, we are less likely to retaliate against. The unfairness, for instance, of a child being born deaf which somehow, though very challenging, feels easier to accept without rancor than the unfairness of one parent who perceives themselves to be taking on the bulk of household chores and begins to feel bitter and resentful towards their spouse. How do we deal with it then? Do we become blaming and accusatory, or do we make space for a respectful dialogue? How do we reckon with the unfair things we cannot change versus the unfair things we might be able to change? The fourth given, pain is part of life, another rough one. Returning again to needs, we can easily recognize that physical and emotional pain don't meet our needs for ease, for comfort, contentment, pleasure, wellness, well-being. Hell no. We find ourselves reeling and trying to find the nearest escape from whatever illness, event, or circumstance that has laid claim to us. Sometimes our way of coping with pain is highly reactive, poorly considered, and we end up doing things that tragically add to the pain. Substance and alcohol abuse, for instance, or committing acts of violence. In our haste to be rid of the pain, which is a totally understandable reflex, we can make catastrophic choices. The last given of Rico's five is people are not loving and loyal all the time. No kidding. They are not, and that includes all of us. We are not loving and loyal all the time, but hopefully we are loving and loyal enough of the time so that life continues to bet on us. What needs are associated with this given? Love, Loyalty, trust, connection, honesty, reliability, consistency, security. These are the main ones. And as much as we treasure these things, there will be times in a person's life when the fulfillment of these needs will be elusive. I'd like to read a section of Rico's book from the chapter People Are Not Loving and Loyal All the Time. When others do not acknowledge us, or they snub, reject, or ignore us, it is perfectly natural to feel hurt, since we are made of penetrable stuff. Our work as healthy psychological adults is to feel the hurt rather than run from it. Our practice as spiritually mature beings is to feel the hurt without having to retaliate. If we feel the hurt more intensely than seems to fit the bill, we may want to examine ourselves and ask if our ego has reared its entitled and demanding head. If it has, we can look at our face in the mirror and say. A note here to listeners that face is spelled in caps. F stands for fear, A for attachment, C for control, and E for entitlement. So, we can look at our face in the mirror and say, fear. I am afraid that I will not survive if everyone does not love me, and this is how I am a source of suffering to myself. Attachment. I am attached to a very specific version of what I am owed, and this is how I am a source of suffering to myself. Control. I need to control others' reactions to me, and this is how I am a source of suffering to myself. Entitlement. I feel I am entitled to love and loyalty from everyone and insist on it, and this is how I am a source of suffering to myself. I am letting go of fear by showing more love and finding excitement in life's challenges. I am letting go of attachment to my version of how others should act, and I accept the given of life that not everyone will be loving, truthful, honest, caring, or loyal to me 
all the time. I am letting go of control and let others love or dislike me as they choose. I am letting go of my insistence that I be loved and respected by everyone and I choose to focus instead on being loving and respectful toward everyone I meet. This is what matters to me now. I am always aware that I also am not loving and loyal all the time and I'm working on that. End of excerpt. Believe me when I say that this book, along with other books by Rico, is well worth the read. And if you're unlikely to obtain a copy but remain committed to making sense of the heartache that you encounter in relationships, consider the five givens that Rico names. I find that a good deal of the time we are led to believe that the good life or the successful life do not include suffering. To be reminded that suffering is in fact part of life is to deepen our relationship with life, with others, and with ourselves. Marshall Rosenberg would say of nonviolent communication, if we could truly master this process, we'd be crying all the time, half the time out of joy, half the time out of sorrow. Celebration and mourning are needs. The ability to celebrate appears to come more easily to us. Mourning, on the other hand, appears to be a skill, something we need to learn how to do, at least in our corner of the world. It seems that many of us would rather be experts on grievance than on grief. Learning to set a place at the table for the givens of life, especially those we feel some resistance towards, is one of the ways that we deepen as humans. I conclude this episode with a poem I wrote several years ago during a painful time in my life. Being Human That first breath, it must have been frightening, a long-ago memory now tucked away in the tender, vulnerable places, laying dormant until a sudden alarming noise or a shaming word or dead animal reopens the memory wound, but then, like a dream, slips back into the night, shy before the sunlit curtain and the intimacy of sheets. You know life still hurts, but you don't remember why. The child asks her parent, is this being human? And the parent draws the child in close. Yes, this is being human. A good student learns to bear pain. And when doubt and cynicism ask to move in, you want to say yes, but you don't. And when hope stops by with baskets filled to the brim, again, the visit is brief. But still you go on because you know beauty can grow in the dark. A friend asks his friend, is this being human? And the friend places a hand on the shoulder of the other. Yes, this is being human. Chipping away at virtuous dreams, life is a skilled exacting carpenter. We the frightened wood in her hands our grain exposed at the edge of the blade, and by mercy and will we are shaped. We're asked to feed each other, wipe tears from each other's cheeks, and learn to bandage wounds, speaking words of thanks as we toil. This is being human. Thank you for tuning into NBC Life. For future episodes, be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or YouTube. For free resources or to book a private session with me, head over to rochellelam.com. Until the next time, stay sane, grateful, and generous.